my name is Katie and welcome to my channel Hearts Content Farmhouse. Today we are going to be making a simple soap recipe. This is a cold processed soap with goat's milk in it. You don't have access to goat's milk where you live, don't worry, neither do I. Today what we're going to do is use a powdered goat's milk that we just got online and mix it with water and that is going to give us a really beautiful goat's milk soap. It has so many benefits for your skin. It's not difficult to work with. It's just one little extra step of mixing this powder with water and we are going to get a really pretty, really nice cold process goat smoke soap. This recipe is going to give us a really nice hard bar with a lot of lather and it's not too drying to the skin. So if this is your very first time making soap, please be aware that there are a lot of safety considerations that you need to keep in mind. Um, when you're working with lye, it can be dangerous either to handle the lye water, the soap, the lye flakes themselves, so you need to protect your body. So you'll need goggles, long sleeves, gloves, an apron and you'll want to work in a well ventilated room because there are going to be some fumes. I do have a video specifically made for very beginning soap makers where I go over a lot of these things in more detail um, so you can watch that. If this is your very first time making soap, I'd recommend you watch that one first and then come back here to make the goat smoke soap. So from now on I'm going to assume that you are comfortable and familiar with soap making and we are just going to get into the recipe. So our first step with this recipe, since we're using a powdered goat's milk, is to actually mix together the powdered milk and water um, to give us our goat's milk. Obviously, if you're using fresh goat's milk, this isn't something you're gonna have to do, but we need 12 ounces of goat's milk. So to get that, what I'm gonna do is do 11 ounces of water and one ounce of the powdered goat's milk. This is a little bit less than what would be recommended if you were reconstituting it for drinking, but for our purposes, it's gonna be great. And then what we want to do, and you're going to do this step no matter what type of goat's milk you're using, is to pop this in the freezer for about three to four hours, maybe more, until it turns into a slushy consistency. The reason for this is that if we add lye to regular room temperature milk, it is going to shoot way up in temperature, which is just a chemical reaction that happens whenever lye comes in contact with a liquid. And if it happens to milk, it can actually get it so hot that the milk will, um, I don't know if curdle is the right word, but it gets lumpy and just gross and weird. So to prevent that, we're going to put it in the freezer beforehand and get it into a slushy consistency. We want it still stirrable so we can mix the lye in, but we want it partially frozen. So once it's time to start getting our ingredients put together, we are going to, just like any other soap making process, measure out our lye. Right now we are using 4.91 ounces of lye. We're going to mix that into the goat's milk and it is going to take a few minutes of stirring. So you'll see this slushiness start to melt and we're going to have a liquid and you want to just keep on stirring until the lumps are gone. And now we're going to measure out our oils. The oils for this recipe are 3 ounces of almond oil, 2 ounces of castor oil, 10 ounces of coconut oil, 10 ounces of olive oil, six ounces of palm oil, three ounces of shea butter, and one ounce of beeswax. And I'm gonna put all this in the description box. If you just wanna scroll down, you'll see this written out for you too. So whenever you're working with beeswax, you'll notice it is always the very last thing to melt. So at first you might think something is going wrong, but it's not. It just takes a little bit of extra time. Make sure you stir until everything is totally dissolved and you want your oil mixture to be at around 140 degrees, a little bit higher. Okay. So we're gonna put both of these solutions aside to cool. I like to wait until they are about 105, 110 degrees, but any range between 100 and 125 degrees is acceptable. You don't want it going much lower than that because your beeswax is actually gonna to start to firm up. So we've come back, we checked the temperature, and now it is time to blend. So I'm gonna pour the lye, it would be the lye water, but in this case it's the lye milk. Pour that into our melted oils and we start stick blending. Now if you're familiar with soap making, you know what we're looking for, we're looking for trace. And that is when the consistency of our soap batter becomes slightly thickened, so it's not totally liquidy, it's not really as thick as a pudding. But what we're looking for is when we lift up our stick blender, we want to see trails of that soap batter resting on top of the pot rather than sinking immediately in. Once that has been reached, we know that trace has been achieved and we can go ahead and pour it into the mold. Thank you. 
Now for this recipe, um, it is going to change into sort of a really light golden color. It's not going to stay pure white because of the soap, I mean because of the milk. Um, so I'm not going to add a color. I am going to go ahead and add a fragrance. This is one of my favorite fragrances. It's from Nurture Soap. And I'm just going to link that down for you so you can check that out if you want some of your own. But like I said, no color. Now once you've reached trace and you're mixing in your fragrance, you can use the stick blender, but don't turn the motor on, just use it to stir. So now I'm pouring this into the mold. I'm doing a 10 inch silicone mold and that will hold this recipe just right. But you always do wanna have an extra bar mold just in case. I didn't need it, but you don't wanna be in a situation where you do need it and you don't have it. And now I am gonna actually put this soap in the refrigerator. Um, the sugars in the milk, if you've ever worked with honey in soap, you know how sugar can cause a soap to overheat and crack or go through gel phase. So if you were to put this, like wrap this up in quilts or put it in the oven to try to force a gel phase, you might actually have a really bad crack or even a little, almost like a little eruption in your mold. So I'm gonna put this in the fridge because I don't want any of that to happen. You could also put it in the freezer. And we're gonna leave it for 24 hours. When you unmold it, it might be a little bit soft. That is okay, it will harden over time. We're gonna cut this into bars and let it cure for a few weeks until it is harder. And that's it. So if you have any questions, please let me know. Um, like I said, please do watch that beginner soap maker video if this is your first time because there really are safety considerations. Um, and if you want the recipe, you can head on over to my blog, print it out, and I will leave links in the description box to that and to all of the ingredients and supplies that I used. So thank you for watching and have a great day.